Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. Rick here with r and Daughters, and today we're going to talk about a Glock. Well, what Glock is this? Let me turn it around here. As you can tell, it is empty, no magazine in there. It is a Glock 22 in 40 Smith & Wesson. So, we're going to talk about what sucks about 40 Smith & Wesson, and what's great about 40 Smith & Wesson. Or the Glock 22 in particular. Uh, a lot of people out there don't like Glock 40 or don't like 40 Smith and Wesson uh, caliber, the or I like to call it 10 millimeter light or 10 millimeter cores or short, whatever you want to call it. Um, the 40 was designed to be a little bit less powerful than the 10 millimeter, more controllable for a larger group of the population. Uh, the police have gone away from the Glock 22s now, and these are trade-ins all over the place. Everybody has them from anywhere from in the $350 range. They may go more or less, depending on what they have. Some of them have police um, agencies etchings on them and all that, so that those will go a little bit more for collector value. Um, so anyway... Why did the police get rid of the Glock 22s and 23s? Well, 9mm has caught up to 40 in technology about 10 years ago. Uh, even though the 9mm is a 100-year-old plus cartridge, a lot of people don't realize that. The P09 Luger should ring a bell. We were talking about 1909, 9, 9x19, 9mm Luger, 9mm Parabellum, all the same cartridge. They're all 9 by 19 still used in military service today. Um, it's not a bad cartridge. I'm not saying that. 40 had an advantage over it for a while, and now 9mm is king of the cartridges. Um, 40 Smith & Wesson can benefit from bullet technology just like the 9mm can and be increased. But people are going to say, well, if you want to increase the 40, won't you go to 10mm? 10mm is still expensive. And even the 10 millimeter that we shoot today is not the same 10 millimeter cartridge that we shot back when the Colt Delta and the Smith and Wessons were released um, in response to the FBI shooting and all that. And everybody went to 10 millimeter. 10 millimeter today is downloaded from those days back in the 90s when it was introduced. So if we go to regular full size power or full power 10 millimeter cartridges. The 40 Smith & Wesson would go, can go to full powder charges and bullet diameter and bettered bullets, then the 40 would, would definitely be king again. Um, and it will. These run in spurts. About every 10 years, another cartridge is dead, and, the, and another cartridge is the new hope for everybody. And it goes in cycles. A lot of the big uh, gun companies do the same thing. Uh, big gun channels, I mean, you'll say the same thing, 40 sucks. Ten years ago, 9mm sucked to them. They're just getting on the bandwagon, get off. If you're like me and are a firearms enthusiast, enthusiast if I can speak, and like to collect weapons, uh, calibers, um, then you don't care about the trends. So, in saying that, let's talk about this Glock 40. So, I listed all the disadvantages of it, which is only one, and that's because no one's really paying attention to it like the 9mm got and eventually 45 will be dead too they'll say that but that's a that's another video and no I'm a fan of 45 ACP too so in saying all this <clears throat> let's talk about the advantages of the Glock 22 and 23 the frame is the same as the 17 and the 357 SIG Glocks that are floating around out there um, the slides are interchangeable. Now, you can get conversion barrels for your Glock 22. Here's the big advantage to the Glock 22 and 23s that are out there. You can get 9mm conversion barrels. You can get 357 SIG conversion barrels. And now, when you want to talk about a hot rod cartridge, we can talk about 357 SIG, but that would be a video for another day. And if you don't know what a 357 SIG is, I suggest you Google it. Or here's a live 40 Smith & Wesson round that we're, we'll talk about here more in detail. This is a federal um, hollow point, of course. I think it's 165 grain. Uh, this gun is on loan to the channel from a personal friend. 
and this is what he's carrying as his backup uh, or his, his defensive load. 357 SIG, if you don't know, is the 40 Smith & Wesson case, a neck down to take the 9mm bullet. And you're talking about a 9mm bullet that's going to be humping. So, the advantage of this gun is, is that not only does it shoot 40, if you spend the money for the barrel conversion, which is just a barrel, it'll shoot 9mm, and, and you can get another one for the 357 SIG and shoot 357 SIG out of it. You can have three calibers and one gun. Now, with the com uh, Chinese Communist Party's COVID-19 uh, pandemic scare, 9mm has disappeared, which means eventually 40 Smith & Wesson will come back into vogue because, one, there will be lots of stockpile out there of 40 Smith & Wesson. Two, it'll be cheap to shoot because everybody went to 9mm. There's a big advantage to the 40 other than caliber swaps and you can get three calibers in one gun which is great 357 SIG will use the standard Glock 40 magazine because the cases are the same um, 9mm uh, mags will most likely have to be used for the 9mm conversion barrel so if you got a Glock 17 already then you already got mags for it if you don't have a 40 um, 9mm may work in these I don't know the external differences are the dimensions are the same. The internal may be different because the 40 Smith & Wesson is a bigger cartridge. Let's check that out. And then we'll go into another issue. There's how the 40 Smith & Wesson is. If you hadn't seen it, this is a 9mm paintball round that they shoot police training and all that. As you can see, there's so definitely size comparisons difference. The diameter of the 40 Smith & Wesson is quite larger. So you can only get 14 or 15 rounds. I just knocked that over. You can get 15 rounds in a standard Glock magazine where this would hold 17 rounds of 9mm. So the case for um, the, that 40 sucks because you get two less rounds is irrelevant um, when you look at the diameter of the, the bullets. So anyway, so let's put this over here. We'll get rid of this paintball round side. And we'll look at something that's going to be a major factor here in this. Of course, you no, know, the gun is loaded, so when I knocked it over, no case of, uh, of no chance of it firing. And it needs to be clean. And we'll get on to not clean. That's the extractor right there. On the 9 millimeters, that extractor is bent over towards the ejection port more, so it can grab the smaller 9 millimeter case and kick it out. On the 40s, um, when you do this, that's easy. That's a part of the trigger group that you can change out if you want to. There's your extractor. Um, it will still grab it and, and extract it, but uh, kicking the case, the ejector there. Um, on most of the ones I've seen work fine, and I'm sure there's Murphy's Law, so meaning that some of them could not work at all. But most of the ones I've seen conversion kits with the barrel, which basically is all just a barrel replacement, it still works. Might not be as reliable. But again, if it's a range toy, fine and dandy. If it's a training aid for practicing malfunction, that works good. Anyway, so let's get on to this one. Check this out. It's got true glow sights on it. The green still works pretty well. The yellow is dingy and need to be replaced. I like true glow. I also like night sights. I like the combination of true glow and night sights. Um, you get the advantages of both worlds um, with that. That's just my opinion on this. These guns range, like I said, anywhere around the $350 mark. They're usually trade-ins. And why did the other reason why the police got away from the 40 Smith & Wessons? It wasn't because 9mm bullet technology and case development caught up. The reason was is because the 9mm is smaller, has less recoil than the 40, and uh, smaller hand individuals and females can shoot and put more bullets on target uh, because of less recoil and that's the truth that's why they went to it wasn't because of, of uh, uh, bullet diameter uh, penetration power all this and that the 40 what it was designed for does a good job plain and simple 9 millimeter bullet technology has overtaken the 40 cartridge in that um, if you compare the same bullet technologies and stick them into 40 Smith & Wesson then they'll be relevant again um, 
but that's the advantage of this gun. They're usually good priced, um, affordable. Uh, you can 40 Smith and Wesson will probably be the new cartridge that'll dry up next uh, because people will be able to sh because nobody's hoarding 40 right yet. I could be wrong on that, but the Glock 22 is a good pistol. It's got the same grip as the Glock uh, 17, so you're good. So it's not a grip issue on this. Now, uh, you got your slide stop and release. I personally like the extended slide stop and uh, slide release because it's extended. I also like the extended takedown lever for taking your gun out because that's kind of small, but that's great. Uh, that's just me. I like the extended um, larger magazine release button. This being a Gen 3, it's not, um, well, you, it's not ambidextrous because it's a bigger hole on that side. So, um, catch your Glock dingus there, safety trigger, you know, it's got that, that's the first safety, there's two internal. It's a Glock. If you had a Glock before, you know it. Um, it's not a whole lot to say about a Glock Gen 3 pistol. Other than these things would probably be gold in California because you can't have anything new there. Um, this should be on this list. Sights change out or cheap on it. Glock 40 is not a bad pistol. Matter of fact, the first Glock that I shot was a Glock 23 from my same friend who had it, and I was not a fan of Glocks. I pick his gun up and I shoot it, and I, I'd make comments of about 10 years ago. I was like, oh, combat Tuckerware plastic cheap gun, still piece of junk, blah, blah, blah. What changed my mind? I shot his Glock, this one right here is Glock 22 at the range one day and decided, this was about three years ago, and decided I liked it enough where I was going to break down and get one. So I went and got a Glock 17, and now I'm a Glock armor, and I have all kinds of Glocks, except for a 40. <laughs> um, and a 357 SIG. So I got a Glock 21, I got a Glock 20, I got a Glock 17, I got a 19X, and I got a 42. I mean, not 42, but a Glock 43. Um, so, and I've featured them on the channels. So this thing is not a bad gun. Um, you can get them cheap. They're good for first time buyers. And we're gonna do a video on, on that here with this gun in a minute, um, later on for the release. So, in saying all this, Glock 40 is a good choice for a gun because you can always convert it to 9mm or 357 SIG um, cheaply. So it's almost as cheap as you can buy another Glock um, in those calibers. And the advantage is that if you got a 40 and you go 357 SIG, you already got magazines. Um, you just have to change out the barrel and you don't have to worry about the extractor like on a 9mm. Anyway, um, don't want to ramble too much longer. My suggestion to Mr. To my friend, I ain't going to mention his name. To my friend, what we need to do on his gun is we need to update his sights. We need to update his um, slide release, um, his slide cover. Uh, there's so many things you can do. This is like the Lego of guns. I don't full Gucci out my Glocks like I do my ARs. Uh, I like to do a, a just updated kits, updated uh, ghost triggers, springs, spring kits, things of that nature. Not a whole lot. Little pin kits here and there, slide cover plates, um, just to personalize them a little bit. Because after all, all Glocks look the same. So, so unless you Gucci them up or put different pins. So that's my thing to him. I'd put different uh, pin kits in here. Uh, maybe uh, colored match the uh, slide release stop and take down lever with the pins and a back cover and then change out his sights so and that would update his and bring his gun up to date with um, sights and things of that nature a lot of people say, oh, you don't need the pins no you don't but if you personalize your weapon or any of your weapons it becomes more real to you i guess or comes a little bit more you have a more connection with it and that's just human nature. Again, like I said, um, mag release, uh, extended version, and all the other things that I mentioned. And this gun would bring it up to date, and it'd be great. You can add a mag well to this gun as well, or you can just mag put the plug in here um, to keep dirt and debris, and that's what happens when you don't have it. Uh, this is his truck gun. 
um, and his carry gun. So this is the only Glock that he has at this time. Um, so he's actually looking into the 9mm conversion kit for it. And uh, so we'll do that and we'll see how he does it. I'll see if I can get him to update the rest of it because um, that way I'll have fun because I'll get to work on it. So, uh, and you know, who doesn't enjoy working on firearms, you know what I mean? If you're mechanically inclined. So anyway, um, please like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, especially um, like like the videos. That helps the channel out. Subscribing to the channel helps us out. On our main page there on our channel art, right on the right-hand side, you'll see our links to Instagram, uh, Facebook, YouTube, of course, Patreon, Teespring, where you can get T-shirts and help the channel out, and uh, Gun Streamer, where we back up all of our videos at. So, please like and sh subscribe and share. If you got a Glock 40 or a Glock 22 or 23 with the conversion kit, the 9mm, let me know in the comments down below how, how it ejects 9mm cartridges. And if you went to the 357 SIG side, let me know because I'm interested on that. Because um, at this point in time, uh, in the future, I may get a Glock, 4, or a Glock 22 or 23 and do the conversions to it. Um, because right now I only own two Glock 40s. I mean, sorry. I only own two 40 Smith & Wesson chambered pistols. And I've featured both of them on the channel, which is my FDE 5-inch uh, um, M&P 2.0 and my CZ75B. Both of those are in 40 Smith & Wessons. So I don't have a Glock in 40. So yes, I know I'm lagging behind on my on my Glock collection. <laughs> anyway, we appreciate you guys watching. And remember, it costs nothing to be nice to one another. And it makes you feel good. And we'll see you next time.